Okay, so on this drill sheet here for lesson 14, this is on my website if you haven't uh, gotten it. But uh, I just want to walk through uh, how we do this. Uh, when, <clears throat> when you're learning the pronominal suffixes, remember there's a set that go with singular nouns and a set that go with plural nouns. Uh, you know what I call the, the first set? So there's two sets of pronouns, right? You could call them set one and set two. I like to refer to set one as the eHarmony pronouns. You guys know what eHarmony is? Okay, this is that dating website. Okay. Uh, eHarmony pronouns are the pronouns that attach to single nouns. Okay? They're looking for singles. They attach to singular nouns. Set two pronouns, I call these the community pronouns. These are the ones that are looking for plurals. They're looking for community. They want to find a plural group and attach to plural nouns. So the community pronouns attach to, uh, to plural nouns. Okay? So eHarmony pronouns attached to singular nouns, community pronouns attached to the plural nouns. The pronouns are fairly close to each other, but, uh, but there are some slight differences. But what is the most common thing you're going to see when you're attaching the set to pronouns, the community pronouns? You're going to see that yet. All right, so you want to just keep your eye open for it. So that's just a little bit of review, and we'll... we'll uh, look at that as we look at these examples. Uh, okay, so what you're asked to do for the following singular nouns, provide the form with the indicated pronominal suffix attached, provide a suitable translation for the new form. All right, so in our example, we're taking susa, adding a first common singular pronoun. The answer is susati, and it's my mare, because this is a feminine form of sus. That's a mare. Whose mare? One CS is the mayor of me. That is to say, my mayor. All right. So here I'm taking Seuss. Seuss is going to be my uh, noun. Is that a, a ma masculine or a feminine noun, by the way, Seuss? That's masculine, right? That's masculine singular. So I want to attach the third feminine singular pronominal suffix. What is the three FS pronominal suffix? It's a. Ah. Is the is the hey a consonant or a mater hey? It's a consonant hey. Good. So that means there's got to be something inside of it. What? A um, uh, peak, right? So susa. That makes this different from this word susa with a hey that has no ma peak in it, right? Mm -hmm. Susa this way is what? Mayor. A mare. Susah is her male horse, right? Her male horse. So Susah. All right. Any questions about how we did that? All right. Let's take Sus and add the third masculine plural pronoun. That's going to be Sus plus what? What's the three MP pronoun? Okay. Um, comets mem. The horse of them. Comets mem, and the them is masculine, right? So how would I translate this into English? Yeah, their horse. So they are plural, but they have one horse. How they all get on it, I have no idea. So their horse, one horse. All right, number three, the var plus the first common plural pronoun. What is the first common plural pronoun? Anu. Yeah, it's, it's the ending anu, okay? So what I do is uh, I'll just start with the var here, the var, add anu. Where's the accent here? Is it the or or devarinu? Yeah, it's on the it's on the seri, right? So I'm going to put the accent mark there because I'm not stressing the final syllable. Anytime the non-final syllable is stressed, I need an accent mark, right? Now, that's the tonic syllable. 
The va is open and pretonic. Can I leave my long vowel here? Old preacher sermons are long, right? That means open pretonic syllables require a long vowel. This is open and pretonic, right? Tones over here, and it needs a long vowel. So will the long vowel stay put? Yes. But this is now open and propertonic. What's going to have to happen to that vowel there? Yes, it goes to a vocal shiva. So don't forget that. So when we add pronominal suffixes, we can have some slight vowel changes here and there. And so it'll become de varenu. So how will I translate de varenu? Our, how many words? One. So it's our word. We give you our word. Devarini. Right? Look at the Devar plus the 2MP pronominal suffix. So, same thing. I'll put Devar here. Now, what's my 2MP pr pronoun? Kim and Kim. Yeah, so it's Kim. Good. So, what am I going to see here for my vowel pointing here? <coughs> Okay, where's my accent on on this? Yeah, chem. Chem's a heavy ending, isn't it? It's going to take the accent over here, so I don't have to put the accent mark here. But that means I've got a pretonic syllable here and a propertonic syllable here. This is open and propertonic. It's got to reduce, doesn't it? So that, that one's going to go to what? It'll reduce to a shiva. Is that shiva uh, silent or vocal? Vocal. Very good. And then what's going to happen here? Um, does the resh get any vowel pointing under it? Okay, so we're going to get a shiva here, right? Because there, there isn't any other vowel point that goes here. But since it's a consonant, every consonant in a Hebrew word has to have a vowel or a shiva with it, right? What am I going to do with this? Okay, it's got to shorten because this is closed, right? That's a silent shiva, which means that's a closed syllable. And the accent is where? It's on chem. So this is closed and unaccented. I've got a cuss, I've got a cuss rule that I, I need to follow here, don't I? So I need a short vowel. <clears throat> so I have devar chem. So our where's our um, what page number are we looking at here? You guys can make sure you have the the book open. So if you look on page one fourteen. You see uh, Kem and Ken have both the reduction of the vowel pointing, the Da became D, and the Kametz became Thak, due to the Kus rule. So we're applying our, uh, our syllable rules, even, even now in this chapter, right? Now how am I going to translate Devar Kem? Yeah, your or y'all's word. And it's just one word, right? Devarkem. All right. Let's take a look at Susa. And we want to add the third feminine plural pronoun. Of her. I'm sorry, of them. Okay. What is going to have to happen to Susa in order for me to add a pronoun suffix to the end? Can I add pronouns to a hey that's a fake hey? No, that's not a real hay, right? What happens to Comet's hay? Susa becomes Susat. Susat, right? In effect, anytime I add a pronominal suffix to a noun, I'm attaching it to the construct form of the noun. So remember, the construct of Susa is Susat. And then I can add pronominal suffixes to that final ta. What's my pronominal suffix for third feminine plural?
What, what was it? Did I? On. 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 Okay, so I'm going to add on. Susatan. Now, where's the accent going to be? Last syllable. It's on the final syllable. So that's tonic. This is open and pretonic. What does Hebrew require for open and pretonic syllables? Long. That's right. Old preacher sermons are long. Open pretonic syllables require a long vowel. Pathak is short, so it's got to become a long A, which is kamet. So it's susatan. Susatan. All right? So that's translated how? Third feminine plural is a female they, so they're... And it's a feminine horse. I see that Tav is marking it as feminine. So it's their mare. All of them have one mare. Okay. All right. What about the second feminine plural pronoun added to Susa? What am I going to have to do to Susa again to add a pronoun suffix to it? Got to change Susa to Susat. And then I add the 2FP pronoun of you women, which is what? We had chem for man, you men, ah, Ken. So Susat Ken. All right. Am I going to put a silent Shiva under here again? Yep. I'm going to put a silent Shiva. Is there anything else that needs to change here? Susat Ken? Are we all good here? Susat Ken? Accents on the Ken, right? This is closed and unaccented. It's got to be a short vowel. Will that pathak stay put? Yeah, because it's short already. I don't need to change it, right? Here, it had to go long because it's open pretonic. Here, it stays short because it's closed and unaccented. So Susat Ken. How would I translate this? The plural you, feminine, so your mare. Only one mare. All right. What's the word makom mean? Place. place. Good. Now we're going to say first common singular pronoun with place is my place, right? So what do I do? Makom. What am I going to add? I got to make this mem non final, right? Because. It's no longer going to be at the end of the word. i got to add a pronominal suffix here. So, makom, what's the first common singular pronoun? E. e. It's a Kyrick yod. We learned that with Lamed, right? Li. So, makomi. Where's the accent? Yeah. It's on the end. So, the ko is open and pretonic. What, what sort of vowel does it have to have? Open pretonic syllables have to be... Long is holom vav already long? Yes. So I don't have to change anything. I've got a long vowel, and even if I wanted to change it, I couldn't because it's historically long, and those are unchangeable. This is now open and propertonic, though, isn't it? What's it going to become? It's got to become a vocal shiva. Open propertonic syllables reduced to vocal shiva. So it's m ko mi. Say that with me. Mukomi. So whose place? My place. My place. All right. This is uh, probably a stupid pickup line in Hebrew, right? My place or your place? Mukomi. All right. Makom with the three ms pronoun. Just do the same thing. Start with makom. Make the mem non-final because we got to add a pronoun. But what's the three ms pronoun? Oh, it's holom vav, and then the accent is on the end, makomo. So what kind of vowel reduction am I going to see here? It's got to reduce at the front. Open propertonic syllable reduces to vocal shiva. So makomo, say that, makomo, is whose place? His place. That's right. Good. Now we have, lastly, Buracha. What's Buracha? Blessing. 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 So I'm going to add a pronoun to blessing. What's the Kamate got to become, first of all? It's got to become Ot. Buracha becomes Burakat. Got to change it to the construct form. 
Now I can add a pronoun. What's the 3FS pronoun? Ah, with a real hey. Where's the accent? It's going to be at the end. It's, it's a final comet's hey, but the hey's a real hey. So it's burakata. So if the, tone, if the tone is here, the ka is open and pre-tonic, what's it need in Hebrew? It's long vowel. So pathak tav has to become kametz. Okay? This resh is now open and propertonic. What's going to happen to that vowel? Open propertonic syllables reduce to vocal shiva. Now I've got a vocal shiva, and the bet has its vocal shiva. Can I leave that the way it is? No, this is a red rider issue, and I will resolve it with violence. Shoot out an eye, become silent. So this becomes beer kata. Beer kata. And I'll get a Dagesh Lene in that cough. Birkata. Birkata. So, whose blessing is this? It's 3FS. Her blessing. I want her blessing. Okay? One blessing. Now, the last one is Buracha with the 2MP pronoun. Y'all's blessing. What am I going to do here? No. Oh. What the first thing I have to do is change the ending if it can change, right? Barakat. Barakat. The blessing of y'all. Now, what's my 2MP pronoun? What's that? Kem. Kem. So, where's the accent? Kem. It's on the chem. So, Kem and Ken always take the stress. That means that Kot needs a silent Shiva. Is it accented or unaccented? It's unaccented since the stress is way at the back, right? So, this is closed and unaccented. What kind of vowel will do closed and accented syllables need? Short. Is my Pathak already short? Do I need to change it? Nope. We're happy, right? So, that's the pretonic syllable. It's closed and unaccented. It's a short vowel, but this is now propertonic and open, isn't it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. it's open and propertonic. So, what's going to happen to that commence? It reduces to a vocal shiva. And now I have two vocal shiva side by side. Fix that. Red rider. Shoot out an eye. Shiva becomes silent. So it's beer, kat, hem. Birkat Chem. Whose blessing? Y'all's blessing. And the y'all is male. Or your blessing. Okay? You all only have one blessing. Okay? So that's how you create your uh, nouns with pronominal suffixes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. For y'all's blessing, is it the same, like, would they use the same thing if they're saying the blessing that belongs to you, the blessing you're giving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if you were giving a blessing, then the, the your could could be functioning. This is what we would call the the subject of genitive. Remember, pronominal suffixes, okay, so basically what we're doing is the noun is the construct and the pronominal suffix is the absolute. So it's literally the blessing of y'all. Okay, the blessing of y'all. And the, the, the absolute noun could have any sort of genitive semantics that we've already seen. So one of those genitive semantics is if my, if, my, if my construct noun or my head noun has an inherently verbal idea, then my absolute or my uh, genitive noun could be the subject of that verbal idea or the object of the verbal idea. So the blessing of y'all could be your active blessing, or it could also be your blessing conceived of as a blessing given to you, right? So, so it could go either way. 
All right, good. Now the drill sheet also has uh, given you some forms where you're asked now to parse the form you see to identify the pronominal suffix at the end and then to translate this keeping in mind whether the noun is singular or plural okay so let's take a look at the first one uh, repeat after me shulkanha that's a long a with a metheg and a vocal shiva. Remember, when we have a kametz or a kametz katu followed by a shiva, the metheg tells us it's a long a and the shiva is vocal. So shul kan nacha. Now, what is a shul kan? It's a table. It's a table. And uh, what is my pronoun? The pronoun is the ka ending here, right? Which pronoun is that? It's the 2MS pronoun, okay? So what, what we want to do is we want to give the lexical form, which is shul khan, which is spelled this way, plus which pronoun is this? What person gender number? 2MS. And we're going to translate this as your table. And the U is a masculine singular U. Are we sure this isn't your tables? Yes, we are, because if this were tables, what would come right before the ka? A yod. There would be a yod in there, right? You don't have a yod here. That yod tell, would tell you it's plural. So this is a singular table. So one u, one table. All right, look at zukeneha. Say that, zukeneha. Zukeneha. What is the lexical form here? Zakane. You just need to remember your vocab words here, right? Zakane. A zakane is a an elder or an old man. Now it has a pronominal suffix ha. Which person gender number is that? It's three F S. Okay. So whose zakane is this? It's her. Now here's the question. Does she have one zakane or plural zakane? Look at your yod right there. That is the plural form, okay? And so this is the community pronoun that's third feminine singular. My eHarmony pronoun that attaches to singular forms is kamate with a mapik. That's her singular thing and ha with the yod before it, right, eha, is her plural things, okay? So I'm going to translate this as her what? Elders. Her elders. Excellent. Good. Now look at number three. Say this with me. Chokmathi. 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 What do you think the noun is? Have you ever seen that noun before? <laughs> Thousands of times, right? This is hokma. What's hokma? Wisdom. Ah, wisdom. Very good. So do you see how the comet hey became, would have been pathak tav, but the vowel had to lengthen when I added this stressed syllable here, right? So, now which pronoun is the kirik yod? Yeah, it's hokma plus the first common singular pronoun, and I'm going to translate that as my one or many wisdoms. It's one, my wisdom. Now, the difference between my when it's one versus my when it's many is the, is the only difference it's going to be frequently between the Keurig versus the Pathak. Okay? So what I want you to know is that if you ever have a Yod with a Keurig before it, the noun is singular. If you ever have a Yod with any other vowel besides Keurig, the noun is plural. Any vowel, Pathak, Sere, Segol, any other vowel with a Yod is plural. Kirik is a single dot. Maybe that'll help you remember. That means it's a singular noun. All right? So my wisdom. Do we know the word or? Have you learned that? Yes, yeah, the word light, or. So the lexical form, the dictionary form is or. 
Which pronoun is this whole bob? That's 3ms. How do I translate the 3ms pronoun? His. His something. Is or singular or plural? Singular. It's singular. There's no yod before that whole bob, so it's his light. One light. Okay. Look at number five. Say this. Susehem. Susehem. So, what have I got here? Well, I've got my pronoun, hem. Which pronoun is that? That's the third masculine plural pronoun. There is a yod before it, isn't there? So this is singular or plural? It's plural. Okay. So this is the plural form of sus. Is it masculine or feminine plural? It's masculine plural. The feminine plural would be what? Susot. Okay, now I would see the oath ending and then my pronominal suffix with the little helping vowel. But here it's uh, the masculine plural. So, um, how am I going to translate this? Susehem, the 3MP is who? There. And then sus is plural here, right? So it's their horses. Good. <clears throat> Let's just contrast that with this form. Okay, here I'll write it a little bit lower. Suso te hem. You see the pronoun hem? Who's that? That's 3MP, so that's there, right? And what do they have? Well, the yo tells you this noun is what? Plural. plural. So it's their plural things. But is this set of horses masculine or feminine? Look at the oat. That tells you it's feminine plural, right? So it's their mares, not their horses. Compare that with what we have here. So susehem, their masculine horses. Susotehem. They're feminine plural horses. Okay, they're mares. Got it? All right. Look at number six. Say this with me. Mitzvah te. <laughs> mitzvah te. What's the lexical form? Mitzvah. What's a mitzvah? Commandment. It's a commandment. Excellent. Is this one or many commandments? One. one. Here's my tav. Mitzvah has to become mitzvat before I can add the pronoun. Which pronoun is just a cough with a silent shiva? Two it's 2FS. Good. So who's the pronoun? Your, a single you, a woman you. Your what? One commandment. So your command. We'll just say well, your command. Your wish is my command. All right. Let's Devaram. Say that. Devaram. What's the lexical form? Davar. Good. And what am I adding to Davar here? Am. That's the third masculine plural pronoun. Is that the uh, eHarmony pronoun or the community pronoun? Is this attached to a singular or a plural noun? Singular. Okay. Good. So who's Davar? Their, their word, one word, right? So devaram, devaram. All right, next, everybody. Yeshuatan. 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 So uh, what's the lexical form of this word? Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua. So Yeshua. You see how Yeshua becomes Yeshuat before I can add my pronominal suffix? What's the final noon with that Kamet's helping vowel? That's the 3FP pronoun. So it's also there, but it's a female there, right? Their what? Salvation. Yes, their salvation. One salvation or many? Yeah, one. There's no Yod before that noon, is there? Okay, now look at this one. Divrechen. Divrechen. Here's my pronominal suffix, ken. Which pronoun is that? 
Is it 2FP, 2MP? What are we looking at? So it's 2FP, right? Chem would be 2MP. Ken is 2FP. Good. And what's the lexical form of divrehem pen? The, the noun is davar, right? You know that word, davar. But there's a yod before the pronoun. What does that tell you? Yeah, it's plural, isn't it? Is it masculine plural or feminine plural? Masculine, masculine plural. When I just have the Sarah yod, it's masculine plural. So this is your, and it's female plural you, your what? Words. words. Good. And the last one, we have Torathenu. Torathenu. Say that. So Torathenu. What's the lexical form here? Torah. Torah. What is Torah? Law. Law or instruction. Good. Torah becomes Torat. Before I add a pronoun to it, my pronoun is Nu. Which pronoun is that? That's one CP. So whose Torah is this? Our. our. And is it one Torah or many Torah? One. one. So our law or our instruction. Let's write our instructions or our laws. What would that look like? Torah would become to wrote. And then I add Anu, but in this case, I gotta use the yod, the extra yod here, seri yod. To ro tenu, the accents on that. To ro tenu. Compare that. That, by the way, is our laws, plural. Compare that with to ra tenu. You see the difference? To ro tenu, to ra tenu. The ot versus the oat. Ot is feminine singular, oat is feminine plural. This sounds the same, anu and anu, but this one's got the extra yod in it. That tells you this is plural as well. So that's the, with the feminine plural, you get a bonus, right? You get two things that mark something as plural. The oat is feminine plural, and that yod before the pronoun is also telling you it's plural. Okay? All right. Any questions about this? Question. Yes. So for number two, for example, how do you uh, transliterate that to English? Uh, number two, yeah. Zukeneha. Yeah, if I were going to transliterate this, I would do something like this. So I've got my vocal shiva, my uh, kof, right? My sere with the uh, line over it to tell you it's a long, Vowel, uh, and N. This is, uh, <coughs> that's a segel yod, isn't it? Yeah, so we're going to have to do this because I can't use the party hat there. Otherwise, that this would be a sere yod, right? So it's okay, nay, and then ha with the long A. And the accent's going to be there. Zakineha. All right. Okay. Now, does anybody have any questions about the chapter? Anything at all? Any problems that you met with as you were going through the lesson? I have a quick question about pronouns. Mm -hmm. um, is there ever a time when uh, plural pronouns, you get a group of mixed gender people, because we have masculine and then feminine. And yeah, 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 you do have mixed gender groups, and, and when you do, usually the masculine plural forms will, will do double duty for those. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick look at our uh, Ross homework here. Oh, I guess I need to pull that up, so... Let me do that again. So let's take a look at any translation questions that you would have here. Anything here in numbers 1 through 10? Um, 
number 10. Um, ten. I had a little trouble with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at number 10 here. So I have tovim, which means what? Good. good. And what form of good is this? Yeah, that's masculine plural, right? So good is something. Now look at devar recha. You know that's the word devar, don't you? See the yod? That's plural. So there's a good chance that tovim is related to the masculine plural word devar here, right? So whose words are we talking about? Well, no, no, look at the pronoun. That's what I want you to focus on. Which pronoun is this? Yeah, it's to a mess. So it's your words, right? So your plural words, good, or good, your plural words. This adjective, is it attributive or predicate use? Predicate. It's got to be a predicate use because if it were attributive, it would go after the noun it agrees with and gender and number, right? So uh, we're going to translate this as your words are good. And then Yahweh is vocative. It's telling, it's naming the addressee. Your words are good, O Yahweh. Ugadola hokmateha. And gudola, what's that mean? Great. 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 And that's a feminine singular ending, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So is this a feminine singular noun? Hokmat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see that's that's normally hokma with a comma te, right? but it becomes ot before I can add the pronominal suffix. It's the same pronoun as I had over here, by the way. So your hokmah, your hokmat is gudola? Great. Great. So your words are good and your wisdom is great. And Yahweh is the addressee, so oh Yahweh. Okay, so does that help? Yeah, how do you tell when things or in the vocative? Is it just context? Yeah, you can't tell by the form because there's not a separate vocative form. So when is something vocative? One, uh, one characteristic of vocative uh, nouns is that it's, they're always going to be used in a context where something is second person because the vocative is always addressing a you, right? So if I'm talking to Yahweh and I say, oh, Yahweh, Yahweh is you in that sentence. So... If you don't have any kind of second person reference going on in the sentence, it's not, not going to be vocative usually. Okay? You, it'll usually be explicitly second person. Sometimes, you know, you might have, um, you know, you, you might have a, a question like, where's the car, Billy? Okay, there's nothing second person in where's the car, but still in the context, I am addressing a you when I ask that question, right? Billy is the you. So, 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 but mo most of the time there will be something overtly second person in a, in a vocative sentence. Yes. What's that last word? How do we know that it's a segol there? Or is that just, it's a, is that due to it being? How do I know what's a segol? The, in the last word. Mm -hmm. Right here. It's a segol there. Is that the normal? Because I'm having a hard time memorizing. All oh, the oh, oh, yeah. It's normally a vocal shiva. That's what I thought. Right? But... Yeah, this uh, lengthened, and this is called pausal lengthening, if you remember. Mm -hmm. When we have a strong disjunctive accent, sometimes uh, the vowel pointing can lengthen, and that, that's what happened here. Okay. I was just getting confused. Yeah. Way is that the plural? Language? Right. It doesn't have the yod. So. Yeah, there's no yod, so that is still singular. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Right. Good. Good question. Other questions? Yeah, Kyle? So if the adjective was attributive, would it also have to have the article on it? It would. Okay. It would. It would. So tovim would go behind the varecha, and it would be the varecha ha tovim. And that would be your good words. Exactly. All right. Other questions real quickly? Yes. Number nine. Number nine. Let's take a look there. So we have batahu. Batach means what? To trust. This is the Cal perfect with a shuric ending. So who trusted? Yeah, that's third common plural. So they trusted. Now here's my question. Do I have a plural noun that could be my subject so that I don't use they, but I use the plural noun? Well, right after batahu, I have im, don't I? So how might I translate this? The, the righteous ones, plural, that's masculine plural of righteous. The righteous ones trusted 
Betorotov. There's my preposition bet. So trusted in. Now look at torot. Is that singular or plural? plural? It's plural and it's feminine, right? And who's torot? Whose laws? This vav at the end tells me it's which pronoun? 3ms. So the righteous trusted in his torot laws. And there's my bonus yod to tell me that that's a plural form, right? So trusted in his laws. Velo halahu, but not walked. Same personal ending, right? Third common plural. Who didn't walk? Well, look, I've got an im ending on this word. Who's Harushaim? It's the opposite of the Tzadikim. The wicked. So, but the wicked ones, lo halahu, did not walk, b in mitzvot, is that singular or plural? It's the plural of mitzvah. So, they did not walk in the, law, the commandments of, and there I have the same pronoun as I had over here. They did not walk in the commandments of him. That is to say, they did not walk in his commandments. Okay? So we, we have a, a yod to tell us it's plural, and we have the ot to tell us it's plural. Okay? Mitzvot. Mitzvot. All right?